What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm introducing a new series of videos I'm calling Range Science, where I'll be conducting various tests of things that interest me on the range. Today we're talking about something that's been on my mind a lot lately, and that is barrel porting. Over the years I've seen tons of photos and a few videos of awesome looking handgun customizations and barrel porting jobs, and I've actually been thinking about porting some of my own guns for quite some time. But I do have to admit that since I've never actually shot a gun with a ported barrel myself, I've been really hesitant to make that commitment to what's essentially a permanent change to the firearm. Now to start things off here, why would someone be interested in getting a handgun barrel ported in the first place? Well for me personally, I absolutely love shooting pistols with compensators. I love the mechanical advantage they give you when running the gun fast. Now for those of you that aren't aware, compensators are essentially designed to sit at the end of the barrel, either screwed on or built into the design from the factory, and redirect gases from the fired round as they exit the barrel, usually straight up, which has the effect of pushing the muzzle back down very quickly after you fire a round, effectively reducing muzzle rise. Now, some people feel this reduces the felt recoil as well, but more than anything to me, it gets my sights back on target faster, which makes it easier to take accurate follow-up shots at higher speeds. Now, barrel porting is essentially the same basic concept. You're machining holes into the top of the barrel in an effort to redirect the gases from the fired round upwards, once again effectively reducing muzzle rise and getting your sights back on target quicker, although in this case the gases could be redirected at several different points depending on how you choose to configure it, not just at the end of the barrel necessarily. However, unless you purchase a gun that's been ported from the factory, you're going to be making a permanent change to your firearm, so it's a really big commitment. Certainly bigger than threading an aftermarket compensator onto a gun that maybe already has a threaded barrel. That said, installing an aftermarket compensator can also significantly increase the overall length of the firearm, changing the balance and drastically limiting holster compatibility in the process. But then if you port your barrel, a lot of people will tell you that you're going to lose a significant amount of muzzle velocity because of the gas is exiting the barrel before the bullet leaves the muzzle, although I'm not so sure that that's really as drastic as some would make it seem. So regardless, with all of that in mind, getting a ported barrel on some of my favorite firearms to potentially increase the performance of guns that already shoot very well for me does start to sound appealing, but again, it's permanent, and although I do understand the science behind barrel porting versus compensators and the idea that quality ports and comps should perform similarly, I've never actually had the opportunity to shoot and test a ported firearm myself. Enter United Firearms, a small company out of New Hampshire with a ton of passion and attention to detail that's actually been around for over six years, but has really started taking off in the past year with their incredible looking work with barrel ports, custom slides, optics cuts, and Cerakote, especially on various CZ platforms. Now, since I actually don't live too far from their facility, I reached out to United Firearms to meet up, try out some of their designs under live fire, and determine for myself, once and for all, is barrel porting really worth it? Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jason. My name is Mike. And we are United Firearms. So back in 2017, I started United R&D. And since then, we have become United Firearms. Some of the services we provide are machining, including optic cuts, barrel porting, slide packages. We also offer refinishing services, such as powder coat and Cerakote. We also offer rapid prototyping and 3D modeling. We've done 2011s, 1911s, CZs, SIGs, everything you can imagine really we've touched. In fact, one of our famous lines is port everything, because that's what we like to do. We're here today to talk about some of our services, our products, and what we have to offer to the marketplace. Also answer a lot of the questions that get asked every single day to help put you guys at ease at some of the concerns you might have, whether it be velocity loss on porting, or questions about what style of porting might be best for your setup, as well as optic cuts and all of the other fun stuff that we do. So we're gonna dive into that today. Now, after spending some time with Jason and Mike touring the United Firearms shop and seeing some of their work up close, I'm now even more excited to try these out for myself. Unfortunately for me, a couple of their customers were kind enough to let us borrow their finished products for testing, which I really appreciated. So at this point, all that's really left to do is to head out to the range, start shooting, and see how these ported setups perform under live fire. But before we jumped into the test, since I've never shot a ported gun before, I wanted to start off with a quick AB comparison with my stock CZ Shadow 2 Compact compared to a United customer's 
newly customized Shadow 2 compact dressed up with an eye-popping orange camo in their inline grenade ports just to see if I could really feel the difference. So let's hit the range and see if this thing shoots as great as it looks. Holy sh**. How was it? Yeah, that feels good. I like that. One thousand eight, one thousand twenty two, one thousand twenty six, one thousand four, one thousand ten, nine hundred seventy nine, one thousand twelve, nine hundred ninety one, one thousand one. 994 1034 1029 1038 1028 1019 1006 987 994 998 990 Alright guys, I've got to be honest with you here, I was really impressed with the results today. Both the inline grenade ports in the CZ Shadow 2 Compact and the Venos ports on the Glock 19X with the Titan Pro Slide performed very well and were extremely smooth shooting. Now as I mentioned before, I've shot a lot of compensated pistols over the years, but this was my first time shooting ported pistols and I thought the results were actually really interesting. The ported experience was both more effective and also more subtle and less drastic than I expected it to be. Now, what I mean by that is, if I'm comparing these barrel port examples to well compensated pistols that I've shot in the past, I would say that the compensated pistols are a little bit more aggressive in how they push the muzzle down with every round fired. Think of it maybe like a hard shove at the muzzle end straight down, while the barrel ports seem like maybe more of a gentle push or an assist to help you get your sights back on target quicker than usual. I think maybe my experiences with compensators being a little bit more aggressive in their approach to mitigating muzzle flip probably contributes to my opinion that these more subtle ported barrel setups actually actually imparted less felt recoil into my hands and arms than many compensated pistols that I've shot. For example, my Shadow Systems DR920P is extremely flat shooting. However, the recoil energy that I feel in my hands when shooting it is pretty aggressive and almost a little bit violent feeling when compared to the Glock 19X that I shot today with the Venos ports, which comparatively speaking still shot extremely flat for me but with noticeably less recoil energy exerted into my upper body than I'm used to with compensated pistols. Without a doubt, the ported guns 
were noticeably softer shooting and faster back on target when compared to the stock versions. Now with that being said, while I definitely did feel a noticeable difference in the recoil impulse on the range, reviewing the slow motion footage back in the studio and actually seeing what was happening was super interesting to me. In addition to the lower muzzle rise and tighter groups on target, I also noticed that if you look closely, the ported guns didn't push me back as far as the stock guns did from my first shot to my last, really confirming that softened recoil impulse that I felt on the range. And then on top of all the advantages gained, including lower felt recoil, less muzzle flip, and tighter groupings, I was honestly really surprised at just how little velocity was actually being lost with these porting setups. Now, I didn't expect it to be as drastic as many folks out there would claim, but I definitely didn't expect it to be as negligible as it actually ended up being, at least in my opinion. I've really got to say that I think the balancing act between the small trade-off and velocity for the significantly increased performance and highly customized look and feel, particularly for fun on the range or for competition, in my opinion, is definitely intriguing. So yeah, guys, I'm super excited about this. Being able to compare these guns was honestly really, really cool to experience, and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to connect with United Firearms to conduct these tests today. After we wrapped up at the range, we headed back to their office and sat down to have them answer some of the most common questions that they see from their customers. So let's see what they had to say. A lot of questions that we get is, can I port this? Should I port it? And what would that do? And what's the benefit for it? So when porting, what objectively you're accomplishing is reducing muzzle flip and muzzle rise. So by putting those holes on top, you're able to push the gas upward, which is keeping and pushing the front of that muzzle downward. So your recoil goes from maybe something like this to something like that. So you're able to stay on track with your dot as well if you're running a red dot you're not losing that sight picture as much because now, again, you have the gas escaping through the top of the barrel, keeping that muzzle flip from coming as higher as it was. Another question we get a lot is, how much velocity am I losing? Am I losing too much velocity? And I think a lot of people end up thinking that the round's gonna come out and drop down like a raindrop. Like, that's not gonna happen. We've done a lot of testing. We're gonna continue to do testing all this year and continue to keep putting out information for you guys to share to make the consumer more knowledgeable of the decisions that they're making. Because as a consumer myself and how I got started with United, I had so many questions and I wish there was a place like this for me to learn. So that's what we're gonna achieve here. With velocity loss, specifically speaking to a Shadow 2 Compact, that's probably one of the most popular setups that we do. And we do an inline with two different versions. We have a grenade style and we have a traditional inline. The testing that we did was run with 124 grain and honestly, it kind of surprised me. I mean, I knew it was going to be less than 100, but the results spoke for themselves. It was 19 feet per second. I mean, that's nothing at the grand scheme of things. So no, your round's not going to just drop off like a teardrop. It's going to still do what you need it to do and it's going to reach out and be able to punch as you want it to. But you're getting so much more from that and you're able to control that recoil even better. One of the questions we also get is, again, can my platform handle porting? Should I port this platform? While yes, our slogan is port everything, and we've pretty much tried everything at this point, one of the most common is a staccato like this, this C2 with the Digicam. Um, it has our traditional inline in it, but also CZs. That's been a huge thing for us, but man, we do a ton more. 1911, 2011 platform, Glocks, SIGs, HKs. I mean, we've done it all at this point. There's all kinds of different setups as well. Not only just the traditional inline or the inline porting, but we also do V8, V6. It really depends on the setup that you're running and the size of the barrel, how much we can actually port it and what's gonna be effective. Now you can't just go drilling a million holes in the barrel and expect it to perform properly. When it comes to setups and what platforms we can do, not all are gonna be compatible with that specific platform. For instance, our V8 that we do a ton on Glocks, whether it be a G34, a 17, a 19, a 45, I can go on. That platform and setup doesn't really work well on a CZ or a slimline gun like a 43X. There's different methods that we use to figure out what's gonna work best for that sort of setup. Also, you don't wanna overport the gun. As I get closer to the breech, for instance, I might lose some accuracy because of the rifling that I'm taking out. Probably the number one question that we get is, can I run factory setups? And really, that's what we base it off of, is factory setups. 
Now, of course, you can tune it and fine tune it, especially on some of the steel frame guns like a Staccato, like a CZ. You can go to a lighter recoil spring, but really we base it off of the factory OEM setups. What I would recommend is when it comes to rounds, 124 typically runs a little bit better. It's also what most people have, although I know 115 is a little bit cheaper, it's still gonna run. It all depends on the effectiveness and smoothness that you want out of it, but I would definitely recommend 124 grain when it comes to porting. Personally, a package that we offer but that doesn't get requested very often is the Titan Pro for the Glock 19 or Glock 17. It has nose ports at 40 degrees from center on both the left and right. I will say personally, I feel that this is the most effective one, reducing felt recoil and muzzle rise. Yeah. I've taken this to the range and thoroughly impressed. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it really just depends again on the setup. Like looks is one thing and we definitely have a lot of customers that we kind of have this joke of a barbecue gun. It's one that's not really going to get used that much. It's one that you show your buddies and kind of show off. So it kind of looks, people go for more looks than function. But I would say for me personally, the, the Glock 34 with the V8 porting was, I mean, there was no recoil. It's, it's like a cheat code. But Again, it really depends because on a CZ, for instance, it's a steel frame. You're able to handle that recoil in and of itself before even porting pretty well. The porting is just the icing on the cake. It's gonna help it, again, reduce that muzzle rise, but you have that weight benefit like you don't get from a polymer frame. One of the most, I think, asked questions that I get five plus times a day is what's the difference in performance for the traditional towards our new grenade style? Nothing. They both perform exactly the same. The porting on the slide can differ, the shape and style of it, but the porting on the barrel for like an inline port will always be the same. They're always gonna be round holes in the barrel at a size that we have specified, gives us not a velocity drop too great, but enough to reduce the felt recoil. Like Mike was just saying, the barrel porting does not change. It is uniform between all of our inline options. Now, if you wanna go with a little bit more flair, that's what you're gonna get when you have the grenade style. And it's gonna perform exactly the same as this Staccato with the traditional inline. Another really popular question that we get is, when I have my slide or my setup ported, do I need to recode it? Because in all of our pricing, we include Cerakote with that. I really like my finish is what I probably get at least once a day. The short answer is no, you don't have to, but you should, because now you're gonna have raw exposed material. Over time, that can corrode, that can rust, everything else can happen to it. Now, when it comes to Cerakote, you can pick your color, whether that be single color, again, that's what's included in most packages, or you can upgrade to a camo, as well as you can also get a battle-worn or distressed look such as this, there's a lot of options and a lot of upgrades that you can do to it. But we also, when it comes to camos, we have like two kind of different styles. We have like what I would say is like a hard line camo. You can see the stencil outlines and then we have also, which a lot of people have been seeing in the CZ space lately, is sort of the ghosted camo where Mike will go back in and kind of fade over those three colors, those four colors that you have kind of blends them a little bit more and, and gives it a totally different look. You can take a, a, a traditional sort of hardline camo next to a ghost camo with the same exact colors, mm. same exact stencil line, we'll look and it's going to look totally different. That's definitely going to be the first question I ask you when we're talking about camos is, do you want to see the breakup between every color in the hard line and transitions, or do you want it to be more faded and sort of blended, which mm. is personally kind of my favorite. I, I, I'm kind of in that mood now currently of, mm. of really liking that ghosted look of it. The most popular color that we get is definitely gonna be black. And if I was to recommend a color on the barrel specifically, I would say black because it's gonna show wear less. And also you're gonna have all the carbon buildup eventually anyways, as you're shooting it. Yes, again, it will get a little bit dirtier. Now you do have gases escaping through the top of the slide, but going black with the barrel specifically is definitely what I would recommend, and I'd probably say what you would recommend as well. Yeah, I would yeah. recommend black Cerakote for most barrel refinishing applications. Will my Cerakoted gun hold up to solvents? <sighs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, don't go dipping it in acid, but like, yeah, don't it's do gonna that. hold up. 
but yeah. Cerakote will withstand pretty much any solvent out there. Pretty much every optic at this yeah. point. I mean, everything from a Acro P2 to a Hollow Sun. Most common optic platforms we cut for, although each pistol does have a limit. There are some pistols you can't put an optic on due to springs and plungers and safety levers and whatnot. And also it depends on the size. Like if it's a slim line gun, like a CZ, when it comes to direct milling, it really needs to be based off of the width of the firearm itself. So like a Glock 43X, for instance, it's gonna be a K footprint. So like a Hollow Sun 407, 507K, EPS, EPS carry. And that's gonna kind of transition over to most CZs as well. Obviously there's, there's a lot of platforms. I think the P07, you can direct mill a DWX, so a Dan Wesson, yep. you can put an RMR on. It kind of all depends, but also if there's a slim line that you wanna put a full size RMR on, we can also mill it and have a plate added to it, but mainly we're talking direct milling of the slide and the optic. A question we get asked a lot is, can you do co-witness optic cuts? The answer is yes. Uh, most optics will not co-witness to factory sites. We are partnered up with many distributors and we can get aftermarket sites that will co-witness with most of the red dots we offer. We can also do an iron relocation. Some optics like a RMRCC for instance, is really long in the back. A lot of times we have to take that rear iron off. And if you still wanted that iron to be on the firearm, we can relocate that to in front of the optic. Me personally though, I will say that it definitely kind of clutters the optic a little bit, but it's definitely an option that we can do if that's something that you wanted to keep and maintain. We're trying to stand out and do things differently. And that's obviously why we're even here doing this sort of content, right? I mean, really coming into this year was a goal to kind of not only just separate ourselves from everybody in the industry, but really start adding a level of detail and clarity into what it is that we do and why we do it. There has to be a method to the madness at the end of the day. It's all very precise, very calculated. That way, again, you're getting the maximum performance. We're not just guessing when we're doing this. I mean, we eat, sleep, and live this every single day. I mean, Mike and I spend a ton of time together. We're in this shop 10 to 12 hours a day, probably five to six days a week. We live for this. And that's why we're able to keep the lead times are, that we are. But also, I mean, this is really a part of us. This brand has become who we are and it's all that we do because we're passionate about it. We love this stuff. Guys, I've got to say, I was really impressed with the entire experience today. United Firearms is doing some incredible work, and Mike and Jason are very down to earth and extremely passionate about their craft, which really resonates with me as a consumer. The ported guns that I shot today were a ton of fun to run, they're extremely soft and flat shooting, and the velocity changes were so mild that I really have no concerns there personally. So with all that being said, what's my conclusion? Is barrel porting really worth it? Now, of course, everyone's going to have their own different priorities and opinions, but for me personally, I would say yes, absolutely, without hesitation. I'm definitely going to be going through my collection of handguns and setting some aside to get some work done, and I really look forward to working a lot more with United Firearms as I go. So that's going to be all for today, guys. We've got a lot more videos coming out soon, including more AKs, ARs, PCCs, handguns, and shotguns. Remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by.